let's talk about uh, how to practice yoga we have spoken a lot about uh, why yoga is important why guru is important what are the different benefits of yoga i have also spoken about supramental yoga in particular which is uh, taught by my guru sri aurobindo and divine mother uh, let's talk about uh, what are the things that's required for uh, yoga and how we can practice so for anybody who wants to practice yoga there are few things that is required one is time just like anything else you want to be a good sportsman uh, you have to invest time you want to go to study as you want to invest time you want to go to music you have to invest time similarly for yoga you need to invest time to progress some people say you can practice uh, meditation 5 minutes a day 2 minutes a day it doesn't work that way right that's kind of just trying to tell people hey you can do 2 minutes just like if somebody tells you you just have to read for 2 minutes a day and you'll be a great literary genius it will not work right so for yoga first thing that is required is time you need to allocate time for it right and you need to be serious about it second thing in yoga is enthusiasm nothing you can succeed unless you have enthusiasm you don't have enthusiasm for something you know for sure you're not going to succeed but whether you should have enthusiasm first or you should practice first i would say that uh, if you practice and start seeing the benefits of it then the enthusiasm will come later on right as you see the benefits you will become more enthusiastic you will practice more but first thing is time you need to dedicate some amount of time i would say to start with maybe 15 20 minutes uh, i would rather recommend half an hour every day but if you find it very hard to start with let's say 15 20 minutes every day so you should practice give time uh, try to generate some enthusiasm then uh, the third thing is uh, guru so in the beginning it's very very hard to find guru right so if i talk about uh, who is a guru who can be a guru who is considered to be a guru uh, in scriptures there is a is a definition for guru right and it is called srutriya brahmanista and if i have to translate it it means that anybody who has realized is inner self or who has realized enlightenment or who has realized god or who has realized the true self um or who has realized oneness uh and who also is aware of various theoretical techniques is considered to be guru right but the primary thing is one must have realized oneness or uh, union with god or enlightenment or whatever you call it that's a must without that nobody can be considered to be a guru and these days if you look at it like everybody keeps giving speeches on youtube on various channels and have thousands of people he is guiding but if you say is he really a guru by definition i would say 99.9999% will not qualify so that's not that's not uh, cannot be considered a guru okay uh, so that is why in hindu traditions in indian traditions there are many things there are called acharyas uh, that means the person who you can emulate there are people who are teachers the guru is something which is combination of two words guru and ru so it means somebody who can take you from darkness to light so it it's it requires somebody who is really really enlightened enlightened person who is who is self realized and those people is very very hard to find so so what should we do then knowing that it is so difficult to find enlightenment master what should i do should i give up should one not try to do yoga uh, no that's not the thing so the starting point is always there are many many various yoga uh, literatures right so that there i'm coming to the point number four the fourth thing is scriptures and books so what are considered scriptures scriptures 
and the books written by or the spoken words of enlightened master so masters have spoken they have written so those things are inspiration for a practitioner so in the beginning what one should try to do try to read uh, the written works or try to listen to what the enlightened masters have spoken and try to practice because all the reading all the stuff is not going to help you much unless you practice because the primary purpose of yoga is to turn your conscious mind within right you have to turn your conscious mind inwards so that you can connect it with the self with your innermost core of your consciousness right your mind has to be turned to be connected with the innermost consciousness which is within your spiritual heart right so once that connection is established one realizes that one is immortal one is all blissful and one has infinite potential within oneself so all those experiences or realizations happen when the mind or the conscious mind gets connected with the inner self right and that is why one practices yoga but the point is that these four things time one of the most important things you have to allocate time you have to generate some level of enthusiasm you have to find a guru and if you are very lucky you get a guru then you are very fortunate but if you don't have a guru the best thing is to read the scriptures the written words of enlightened master okay or many enlightened masters but you have to stick to one who you can practice if you read a lot and if you try to practice all kinds of stuff maybe it will be very hard so you have to stick to one set of practices and go to the deep uh, go deep into the practice so that way you can realize okay so that's the starting point uh, allocating time trying to generate some enthusiasm trying to find a guru if possible a living guru or trying to find uh, the books or written words or spoken words of enlightened master so once you have this you're pretty much on the path right and then you practice and there are few things that usually is recommended for somebody who wants to succeed in yoga there are certain do's and don'ts right uh, one of the things that is spoken about uh, in scriptures that uh, helps one in progressing in yoga is uh, leading a moderate life right leading a ethical moral life and leading a moderate life life of moderation so what does it really mean means having some kind of a compassionate heart right loving compassionate heart you would not like to become an angry person person who is always in rage you would not like to be a person who is uh, committing violence with those kind of things are not helpful right anger violence anything that disturbs your peace will not be help- helpful on the contrary what is helpful is somebody who is very generous right with his time with his uh, uh, money somebody who is uh, a loving person very compassionate person who helps others those kind of uh, divine qualities helps you right so so generating those qualities or trying to harbor those qualities is is a good thing second thing is leading a life of moderation because in this world in uh, in the modern world most of the people lead a life of extreme so we work extremely hard uh, we work sometimes 12 13 14 hours a day uh, we then party hard then we binge hard then we do everything in its extremes that is not helpful okay so you would like to maybe work 8 to 10 hours a day which is which is perfectly normal you would like to sleep uh, moderately 6 7 if you don't sleep if you uh, then that becomes uh, harmful so you have to have a moderation in your work right moderation in food don't try to eat too much or fast any extremes right eat moderate amount of food preferably non food divided of non vegetarian food vegetarian food is helpful but if somebody is used to non vegetarian food that's okay so try to be moderate in in your food intake 
and uh, try not to drink if you are used to drinking alcohol trying to reduce uh, alcohol consumption so that that doesn't help so that is one and entertainment anything so try to lead a very moderate life a ethical life a moral life life of loving compassion that is perfect so once you have these things do's and don'ts and all the four things that i have told you that is helpful and you find start practicing then you will be perfect you will be on the way right and then slowly slowly you'll figure out more and more things slowly slowly things will start happening on its own and uh, i think that's it so it's very simple right so so you you may start practicing some asanas some pranayams meditation anything and everything that helps you i would say that practicing meditation for 10 15 minutes a day is very helpful along with that you must do some some uh, some asanas or some exercises some breathing exercises those are also helpful but uh, important thing is practicing meditation and uh, you could meditate different ways i'll i'll tell in another video what are the different ways you can meditate and what really is helpful i think one of the things that helps a lot of people is trying to um, keep the picture of uh, your deity or a guru in your heart and uh, focus on his image within your heart close your eyes and start focusing on him that is very very helpful okay that is all for today's video thank you all for watching 